Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at <clears throat> let's look at this. The action by the stand-on vessel and the action by the giveaway vessel. Rules. Sixteen and seventeen. Yeah, rule sixteen is action by the giveaway vessel. It's on page thirty-three. <clears throat> action by the giveaway vessel. Every vessel which is to directed to keep out of the way of another. Sorry. Every vessel which is directed to keep out of the way of another vessel shall, so far as possible, take early and substantial action to keep well clear. <clears throat> Pretty cut and dry. Action by the stand-on vessel is a bit more complicated. It says, where one of two vessels is to keep out of the way, the other shall keep her course and speed. The latter vessel may, however, Take action to avoid collision by her maneuver alone as soon as it becomes apparent to her that the vessel required to keep out of the way is not taking appropriate action in compliance with these rules. When, from any cause, the vessel required to keep her course and speed finds herself so close that collision cannot be avoided by the action of the giveaway of vessel alone, she shall take such action as will best aid to avoid collision. A power-driven vessel which takes action in a crossing situation in accordance with subparagraph A2 of this rule to avoid collision with another power-driven vessel shall, if the circumstances of the case admit, not alter course to port for a vessel on her own port side. This rule does not relieve the giveaway vessel of her obligation to keep out of the way. <clears throat> so the part that said not alter course the port for a vessel on her own port side in a crossing situation. Let's look at what would happen. <clears throat> Can you picture that? So a crossing situation, the vessel to starboard has right away. Right? Right. So that's the stand-on vessel. So the stand-on vessel has the giveaway vessel to port in a crossing situation. And the rule is saying, in this crossing situation, the stand-on vessel should avoid altering course to port toward the giveaway vessel. Makes sense, right? Oh, yes. Whoa. And the, the giveaway vessel should try to alter course and avoid crossing ahead and cross to the stern of the other vessel. Okay. So the stand-on vessel has to veer to the starboard side. Yes, correct. Correct. <clears throat> and the giveaway has to pass a stern. Yeah, so the appropriate thing is stand on vessel, maintains course and speed. Mm -hmm. And the appropriate thing for the giveaway vessel is to make an early and substantial alteration of course or speed, or both, to avoid crossing ahead of the stand-on vessel. This rule 17 in action by the stand-on vessel is saying, if the giveaway vessel is not giving way, stand-on vessel must take action. As soon as it becomes apparent to her that action by the giveaway vessel alone will not be enough to avoid collision, she shall take action, she must. And the action taken in a crossing situation should not be a change of course to port. You're going to get in a head-on. One time I was in my car, <clears throat> gave it a little too much gas in the winter in a slippery parking lot. So I kind of I started sliding towards, towards the busy road. I wasn't going to go in it, but for some reason I cranked all the way to port. Right, so my car ended up, didn't go in the street, but ended up, it would have been in a head-on situation. Very bad news, and that's when the rule really set in for me. I said, whoa, why would I have ever done that? Mm -hmm. I should have gone all the way to starboard, so it, if nothing else, it would have been a glancing blow, or it would have just sped me up real quick. 
if I got okay. rear-ended. Yeah, that makes sense when you draw the picture. Yeah, no so, alternative. Not to port, but only to starboard. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>